Hello everyone, Marcus Wolf here, welcoming you back to yet another episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice For All. Last we left off, I got lost during the testimony because I thought I pressed everything and apparently I didn't, so I ended up getting the game over. We did not need to see that. And now we cont And now we continue on trying to prove that this woman in this picture is not Maya Faye. Ah, uh, anyway. The, the thing here is, is there any way we can prove the person in this picture is not Maya? Yes, there is. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but remember the bloody clothes that we have on Maya as evidence is bloodied. But we spent like a couple episodes ago saying that there's a bullet hole in the costume. Maya was wearing that, that, that costume when she got, sh when, we, when, blah, when she was shot at. So, why is there no hole anymore all of a sudden, huh? This is not right! Your Honor. Oh, the fire has returned to your eyes, I see. <coughs> this picture. Within this picture lies a critical contradiction to all the testimony up until now. A, a contradiction? Ah, so you think you spotted the problem with this picture? Then earn your keep, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Why don't you point out exactly what is so strange in this picture? That text went so fast. But it's right here. Please direct your attention here. T to the slave? But, but there isn't anything odd about it. And that is exactly why it's so odd. Something that should be there is suddenly missing. Should... should be there. Ah! Uh, uh. There was a bullet hole in the sleeve of the defendant's costume. If that's the case, then it should be in this picture as well. Uh-oh. Miss Von Karma! You... you intended to hide this valuable piece of evidence. <clears throat> You will most certainly be assigned a penalty for this. Alright. This should do some major damage to her argument. Don't celebrate just yet, Phoenix. Oh, you like to bring down the mood, don't you? Take a look at Miss Von Karma's face. She's still got that condescending grin plastered on her face. Ah, <sighs> jumping the gun, I see. Your Honor. <clears throat> I would like to extend an apology on behalf of those incompetent fools. What do you mean? And what incompetent fools? If those fools down at the precinct hadn't missed this bullet hole, I would have gotten a report about it. As I didn't, I could not have known that this picture was of any value to this case. I see. God, she's lying through her teeth. I know it. That woman knew everything. The bullet hole, the picture, everything. But you can't prove that. Francisco von Karma's idea of a perfect case is quite fascinating, don't you think? Your Honor, you need not worry. If you must assign a penalty, I'll personally make sure that detective get what's coming. I'm sure there will be a great gnashing of teeth at his next salary discussion. Oh, poor Gumshoe. Well, in any case, this is a very big problem. When the defendant was taken into custody, her costume had a bullet hole in its sleeve. However, from this photo, it would appear that right after the shooting, there was none. The judge is confused by this strange twist of events. This is your chance, Phoenix. Load all you've got into this one shot, alright? Got it. Watch this, Maya. Your Honor, there is only one logical explanation for the contradiction. The shooter is someone else. Because clearly, the, we, we, we're all there, so there was no bullet fire by the time we all went in. And yet there's no bullet hole. Maya did not suddenly change clothes in that span of a couple seconds. So that only means we're dealing with another person, legitimately. In this picture. 
The defendant's sleeve had a bullet hole in it. However, this person clearly does not. So, there can only be one explanation. The person who shot Dr. Gray was not the defendant, but an altogether different person. But! Order! If order is not restored, I will suspend this trial. Ow! Why me? The, the defense... The defense's argument is a complete mess. A complete mess? I fail to see how, Miss Von Karma. Please enlighten us. A witness! Oh! What the heck? Is there any way to ask Gal a favor? Oh, be quiet! You were the one who said it was only the two of them when you entered the room. Well, you know... Well, you know... If you were lying, I swear that my vip would be the last thing you see. Uh, it looks... You look mighty scary, so... Why do we say... Yeah! I swear I wasn't lying or nothing! There wasn't anyone else in there, honest! You see? Now riddle me this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Where did the defendant vanish to? And where did this other woman appear from? Oh... Why is it lately all I want to do is cry? Well, if the person in this picture is not the defendant, then this poses two very big questions. First, where did the defendant vanish to? And where did this person come from? That's right! Now hurry up and answer, Mr. Phoenix Wright! Come on, you can't fall apart here, Phoenix Wright. Wow, I can't believe that even me is calling me by my full name. But, I mean, how, how am I supposed to prove something like this? Had enough yet, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Or do you think you have enough in you to turn things around even now? To, to turn things around? That's right. Me would always turn things around and change your perspective. Phoenix? So, where did this intruder appear from, and where did Maya disappear to? I need to look at this situa situation from a different angle. <sighs> Let's see. What if, before we broke in, the third person was already in the room? That makes sense, because it's a locked room otherwise, so the third person has to be already in there. And what if Maya had left that room somehow? If I could prove that either one of those conditions were true. Mr. Wright, let's hear what you've come up with. I think what happened before we forced our way into the channeling chamber is... <clears throat> it's one of the two. Either a third person had entered it beforehand, or Maya had left the room. Now, Phoenix had put it this way. We just need to prove the possibility of one of them. Oh god. Let me think. I don't think I can prove a third person entered it. Be only because we questioned Lada about it. That's actually where I got my game over. We, we, we questioned Lada about it. Like, to hell and back. And she was adamant that there was no one in the room. Well, apart, apart from uh, from the victim and the and, and, uh, suspect. So, I don't think we have any way to prove a third person entered the room. I... Th so that means that I... That there must be a way to prove that Maya left the room. I am honestly thinking about my evidence right now. Uh, what do I have? What do I have? Um... Oh god, I really actually don't know. Well, clearly that's a different person in the picture. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The, the, um, uh, the, 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 the key. The key. We have a key that Pearl gave us. I mean, it hasn't been officially- I don't think it's been officially put down in the, uh, in the court record, but I am very certain that is the channeling chamber key. It's only one of a kind. Maya had it when she went inside, and yet now, Pearl gave it to us. How the heck did Pearl get access to the key if Maya did not leave the room? Because Pearl had the key, that is evidence enough that Maya had 
somehow left the room. I think I found it. Maya left the channeling chamber at some point, and the defense can prove this. Oh, and how a foolish fool makes a foolish face while dreaming foolishly foolish dreams. Maya Fay was being looked after by her aunt, Morgan Fay. The chances of her leaving the crime scene is lower than that detective's salary. Well, let us see some evidence are the way. Prove that from the murder until the time of arrest, the defendant had left the room. The key. I swear, this has to be the channeling chamber key, and Pearl gave it to us. Miss Hart, do you remember this key? Um, well, now I've seen it. Hey, that's the channeling chamber key, right? Before the channeling started, Maya locked the door from inside with that. The defendant herself locked the door. Yeah, yeah, that's why we all couldn't get that door open. The key's the only one of its kind, after all. Oh, one of a kind, you say? <laughs> Wait. Mr. Phoenix Wright. Yes? Looks like she's finally caught on. I'm afraid to ask this question, but... Why is it that key is currently in your possession? Oh? What do you mean? If Maya Fay locked herself in, then the key should have been with her. Yes, agreed. However, she did not have it with her at the time of her arrest. Ah! Oh, well, ain't that a kick? So how come you're holding on to it? I got this as a present from a certain little girl. And that little girl was nowhere near the scene of the crime at the time. Well, that's preposterous. This means that Maya Faye must have left the room. If she had not, then I would not be holding this key you see before you. No! Well, it seems we have come to an impasse of sorts. This picture has clearly captured the face of the murderer. However, is this person the defendant or not? The defense is arguing that this person is not the defendant. Furthermore, as proof, the key they submitted... Oh. Oh, whoops, I totally put you... I can't even ad-lib that correctly. Ha! <laughs> Furthermore, as proof, this key has been submitted as evidence. Miss Von Karma. How can this be? At this point in time, a verdict on the defendant's guilt is not possible. My perfect case. How is there a flaw in my perfect case? Don't think you won yet, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I am a prodigy. I have never lost a case. And I don't intend to start now in this courtroom losing to a fool like you. I don't care what I have to do. I will get my guilty verdict. That's enough. If would you like to continue, do so in the lobby. Court will reconvene tomorrow at 10 a.m. That is all. Court is now adjourned. Somehow we managed to solve another day. Somehow. But that is a true statement. Maya Fay has the only key. Therefore, it's impossible for me to for Phoenix to hold the key. If anything, it should be in the in it should be with Miss Von Karma, as the police would have confiscated it from Maya. Wow, that was you, Pearly. You summoned my sis. Yes, I felt I had no choice. Oh, well, great going, Pearly. I knew you were special. Hey, Nick, did you know? Um, yeah. It's not like anyone else in there could have done it. Uh, Nick, I know you're trying really hard and all, but I really don't remember ever leaving that room. And I don't think that a third person could have gone in, in there. Yeah. Well, at least we have until tomorrow to figure things out officially. Like, what happened in that room, for instance. Yeah, I'm counting on you, Nick. Uh, I envy the two of you. Oh, uh, by the way, Nick... Do you think you could take Pearly back home for me? Sure. 
All right, Pearls. You're it. Oh, God, that was... <laughs> I'm sorry, Phoenix. You are not Pearls. <laughs> All right, Pearls. Are you ready to go buy some tickets? Huh? A ticket? Oh, poor thing. So sheltered. Yeah, she... Yeah, Morgan Fay really sheltered Pearl. I mean, it's not Pearl's fault. She doesn't know what a train is, what a ticket is. Morgan really sheltered her. There, there is no way around it. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Let me just go ahead and say... I end this episode. It's another short episode, but whatever. It is what it is. 15, 20 minutes. I, I thought it would be a bit longer, but... Because I made that debacle again, the game over, and messing up everything i got very lost in the time frame like i don't even know like to this day i to this day at this moment i still don't know if that is really the last episode 30 minutes or not because i haven't edited it yet but that's neither here nor there i officially call an end to this episode and say goodbye everyone i'll see you on the next episode where we will continue our investigation and try to figure out what the heck really went on in that closed room until then Later, everyone.